السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين ما بعد فعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وهدينا من نجدين صدق الله مولانا عظيم الصلاة والسلام عليك يا رسول الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا حبيب الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا نور الله صلى الله تعالى عليه وسلم Inshallah, we dedicate this ishtema to Shanaab Qari Abdul Rasul Sahab Rahmatullah Alayhi Qulam Rasul Sahab who passed away recently and mashallah it was a shock to all of us to the muqtadi of the masjid to the students and to the wider community. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raise their hands, inshaAllah. I saw some students crying, and uh, they were obviously remembering their compassionate teacher. And you could see that how much love and effort was put in by Qari Sahab in order to teach these children, mashaAllah. And all these will be sadaqai jariya. All the good that Qadi Sahab did, inshallah, this is the time for him to reap the rewards. The work is done, there is no more work to be done. Now is the time that he will be, inshallah, enjoying the fruits. The title of this program was Towards Jannah or Jahannam. The ayat I recited, Allah Ta'ala says, Wahadayna Najdain. And we showed them both the paths. We always have a choice. Everyone has a choice. People have a choice to be a believer or to be a non-believer. Okay? Even today, all the non-Muslims in the world, Allah will give them a choice. Okay? They have a choice and a measured and informed choice whether to accept Islam or not to accept Islam. And there is no one actually who is not given a choice. If somebody does not get this choice, for example, somebody lives in a remote island somewhere and he never heard about Islam, he never heard about the Prophet of Islam, he never heard about the Quran, then for him, just to believe in the oneness of Allah is enough. He will enter Jannah. Like people before Islam. Okay, the only condition was that they believed in the oneness of Allah and did good deeds, they will enter Jannah. But for all those people who are exposed to Islam, they know about Islam, they know about the Prophet of Islam, they know about the Quran, then they have to make a choice. Allah says, for everyone, I have showed them both the paths. For example, we are Muslims. We too have choices. We have a choice that we will either choose to pray Fajr namaz tomorrow, or we will choose not to pray. Some of us have already decided that tomorrow morning we are going to pray Fajr, no matter what. Some of you have not yet decided. Some of them have, Mazallah, decided that, you know, I will not wake up for Fajr. I have to be up late till night. And, you know, it's Friday night. I'm going to go out. And I'm not going to wake up for Fajr. No way. Okay? This is the choice we have made. In the same way, we make choices for different things. Now, depending on the choices we make, we will be destined either for hell or heaven, for Jannah or Jahannam on the day of Qiyamah. Okay? Depending on what path we take, what route we choose, it cannot happen that you walk on a certain path and the destination will be somewhere else. That cannot happen. If you walk on the path of Jannah, you 
will end up in Jannah. If you walk on the path of Jahannam, Ma'azallah, you will end up in Jahannam. And it is insanity to believe that you will be walking all your life on the path of Jahannam and suddenly something will happen and you will be taken to heaven. This won't happen. Yes, the shafat of Rasulullah is true. But how do we know that we will die in the state of Iman? How do we know? We will only die in the state of Iman if we lived as a mu'min. If we lived as a believer, we will die as a believer. If we die as a believer, we'll be raised as a believer. But if we don't live like a Muslim, how do you expect to die like a Muslim? And if you don't die like a Muslim, you won't be raised like a Muslim. But today I want to focus on this one ruku of Surah Al-Zumar. And inshallah, this will help us make this choice, which path to take. And Allah paints a beautiful, elaborate picture of what will happen on the day of Qiyamah, the, you know, the final walk. Say, for example, a person is convicted of murder or whatever and he's to be hanged. That final walk when he is being taken from his cell to the chamber where he will be hanged. What is his state? What is he thinking at the time? What is he going to say? Allah Ta'ala paints a picture of this. When people are being taken to Jannah, what is the estate? What will, be, what will they be saying at that point? And those people, Ma'azallah, who will be taken to Jahannam, what will be their emotional state? What will they be saying? And Allah informed us before time so that we could make this informed choice. Which group do you want to belong to? And actually, the name of the Surah Zumar means groups. Means groups. So let us just look at a few ayah and understand. And this is a process of learning the Quran too. Okay, I'm not doing a speech, but we are here to learn the Quran, inshallah. A few ayat of the Quran, and let's see how Allah Ta'ala paints this picture. Allah Ta'ala says, وَسِيقَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا إِلَىٰ جَهَنَّمَ زُمَرًا The kuffar, the non-believers, will be herded towards Jahannam. You know when you herd animals? Quick, 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 come on, come on, come on. Okay? There is no respect in that. They are being dragged. They are being pushed. Go, 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 go. Okay? This is how they will be taken. Where? Towards Jahannam. How? Zumara. In groups. What kind of groups they will be? They will be in groups depending on what they believed. If they believed in some God other than the real God, they will be together. If they believed in some kind of belief which is not right, they will be together. Or all, all the alcoholics will be together. All the fornicators will be together. All the sinners who never prayed their namaz will be together. You will be in groups. Just like you have groups here, you will see that there is a group when no one in the group prays namaz. No one prays. Because if one of them prayed, the others would have prayed. Or that one person would have left that group. It cannot be that you are part of a group where one does something and the other does something, this won't happen. We used to go to college and university or whatever, but Alhamdulillah, when Allah gave us the hidayat of Islam, true Islam, practicing Islam, all the other things were left behind. And they actually said that, you know, we are not going to be friends anymore. We said, it doesn't matter. This is the path I have taken. If you want to walk with me, walk with me. Otherwise, we will separate. And Alhamdulillah, Islam made this farq. Islam made this distinction that we were separated from all the evils of the society. Alhamdulillah. The moment you become a true Muslim, all the other unwanted, unnecessary things will move away from your path automatically. You don't have to do it. You don't have to tell that person, your friend, I don't want to be your friend anymore. He will see that this guy goes to the masjid all the time. I can't be with him. This guy doesn't want to watch girls, I can't be with him. He doesn't want to stand outside college, I can't be with him. This guy doesn't want to, you know, 
come to cinemas with me, I can't be with them. They will separate themselves. So, just like we are in groups today, we will be in groups on that day, depending on our beliefs or depending on our Amal. So they are in groups and they are being herded. Where? Towards Jahannam. Hatta ida ja'uha futihat abawabuha. To the point that they come to the door of Jahannam. Allahu Akbar. Now imagine Jahannam. You need to picture yourself there. Okay? It could be you and me. Nobody is certain. Okay? Don't think Jahannam is for somebody else. We don't know yet. Nobody is certain. So imagine, picture yourself, Jahannam, raising fire, the smell, the stench, the most terrifying place you can think of in this world. This is even more terrifying. You can't imagine. You can't comprehend. But there are certain things you can. Imagine snakes and scorpions. They are going to be there. Imagine fire, raging fire. It's going to be there. Imagine unbearable stench. That is going to be there. Imagine the most vicious of animals they will be there everything bad evil you can think of that is jahannam even more than that now imagine yourself picture yourself you are at the door of jahannam and the door of jahannam will be opened look at the mercy of my lord he has kept the doors closed he has left the doors closed it's not open <coughs> just like a prison the doors are not closed so that nobody can escape. One reason why Jahannam's door is closed is also that the heat cannot escape. If it's open, the heat will escape. Others might suffer, okay? Or the heat in Jahannam might be reduced. To avoid that, the doors of Jahannam are closed. And also this is the mercy of Allah. Allah will not leave it open. Only when somebody has to go in, that Allah will open the door of Jahannam, the angels will, or only if somebody has to come out, somebody is evicted, then the door of Jahannam will be opened. <coughs> now the guardian, the guarding angel of Jahannam will speak, and he will say, أَلَمْ يَأْتِكُمْ رُسُلٌ مِّنْكُمْ يَتْلُوا عَلَيْكُمْ آيَاتِ رَبِّكُمْ وَيُنْهِرُونَكُمْ لِقَاءَ يَوْمِكُمْ هَذَا that did the messengers not come to you? Did the warning not come to you? You know, did the Imam not tell you about things? Did your teacher not tell you about things? Were your parents not always nagging you, pray namaz, pray namaz, pray namaz, do this brother, do this my son, do this my daughter? Were they not telling you all the time? Did they not come to you? Did the warning never come to you? Did nobody tell you that Jahannam exists? Did nobody tell you that this conversation is going to take place? Just like I'm telling you today, that at the door of Jahannam, this conversation will take place. The Prophet ﷺ foretold us. He told us beforehand what conversation is going to take place over there. So the angel will ask, did all this never come to you? What can we say? You know, there are two stages. <coughs> First, before the accounting, when the same question was asked, you know what the non-believers will say? Oh, nobody came to us. Nobody came to us. What Rasul? No Rasul came to us. No book came to us. They will deny even there in front of Allah. You know these liars are not only liars in this world. They are liars there too. They are right there in front of Allah, in front of the prophets. They will say, no, no, no prophet came. No book came to us. Nobody came to us. But when the verdict has been handed over, when everything has been settled, no, no, no. It has been proved. They came to you. You rejected. You chose not to accept their path. Now you will go to hell. So the final verdict has been given to them. The angels are told, drag them to Jahannam. Now they will be asked the same question again, right at the door of Jahannam. Now tell me, did nobody come to you? They'll say, yeah, they did. They did. The prophets came. The imams came. My teachers told me, my parents told me, they all told me. But you know what? I didn't listen. I didn't listen. And now I am worthy of the azab that Allah has chosen for me. I deserve it. They will admit they have no other choice. They are right at the door. They are right at the door. There is nothing which can save them. They will finally admit our fault. But it's too late. Why don't we admit now? Sorry, we did wrong. 
Let me put it right there. Why don't we turn now? Why do we wait till it is too late? Why? People die suddenly, all the time. They don't get any warning whatsoever. There is no warning for death, but there is warning for Jahannam. Why not take heed? Anyway, <coughs> now they will be told by the angel. Now enter Jahannam. Now enter the door of Jahannam and stay in there forever. Stay in there forever. Imagine never coming out of it. Never. And this is only for non-believers, obviously. Believers, may Allah save us all, if they ever happen to enter Jahannam, they will come out. Eventually. But Allah, whoever, even one second of Jahannam is not worth it. One second. You will forget every pleasure of this world. Every pleasure. One second. You will say, no, I never had no pleasure in this world. Even one second of Jahannam. Even to be at the door of Jahannam is like an azab in itself. <coughs> but imagine for those people who have to stay in it forever. And what an evil place. What an evil place to be. For the arrogant. Allah says, for the mutakabbirin. They did not believe. Why? Because of the arrogance. So nothing's going to happen. Hmm. We'll see. You know the attitude? We'll see. We'll see. See? This is what you'll see. You'll see Jahannam. You know this attitude of arrogance. Your parents tell you, pray namaz. Go to the masjid. But out of arrogance, we say, I don't care. You know the I don't care? This is the I don't care generation. I don't care. It doesn't matter. I'm not bothered. I'm not bothered. You know, this is the attitude. This is our attitude. We're not bothered about anything. Our teachers say I'm not bothered. Our parents say I'm not bothered. The Imam says I'm not bothered. Rasulullah said, you don't say I'm not bothered because you'll be a kafir if you say that. But the attitude is such. I don't really care. I've got better things to do, Masabah. Anyway, this is one side of the picture. And you know about it now. Now let us look at the other side. And this is how Allah's book works. Always balance it. Good and bad is always mentioned together. Jannah and Jahannam is always mentioned together. Iman and Kufr are always mentioned together. So now, وَسِيقَ الَّذِينَ اتَّقَوْا رَبَّهُمْ إِلَى الْجَنَّةِ زُمَرًا And now, <coughs> even though the same words are used, وَسِيقَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا وَسِيقَ الَّذِينَ اتَّقَوْا Okay, same words are used. But, Sayyidi Ala Hazrat, he makes a translation, Allah Akbar, which is so fitting. There, the Kufa were herded towards Jahannam. And for the Muslims, for the believers, they will be on their mounts. Wapni Sawari Parmoni. Okay, you might not have a car there, but you will have the best mount, a best ride. You will be on your best horse. You will be on your best camel. You will be on your best animal. You will be riding, inshallah, with respect and honor towards Jannah. You will be raised like this. You will be on your mounts. And what are these mounts? Your good deeds. Your good deeds will be turned into mounts. So those good deeds which you are doing today, which you think that, you know, you're not getting enough out of it. You're not getting any reward. Believe me, the moment you die, you will start seeing the reward of it. You might not see in this world or you might not realize that this is the reward of the good I have done. But the moment you die, you will start seeing the reward. You'll see these beautiful animals which you'll be able to ride, which you can only dream of now. Okay? Imagine you driving or, you know, riding a beautiful animal on a beach or something. Okay? But this is really going to happen. On the day of Qiyamah, your deeds will come and you will be riding on that mount. And who? Not people who believe. Allah says, people of taqwa. People who fear. That means believers are those who fear. Believers are those who fear. You fear, so you just can't go to the cinema. You can't. You fear, so you cannot chat with a girl. Or a girl cannot chat with a boy. There's this fear in us. 
There is fear. We just don't go to the wrong places. We don't go to the pubs even to have Fanta or something. They say, I went to the pub, but I was just having a soft drink. But why were you there? Why were you there in the first place? Why were you there in such an evil place where the land and the curse of Allah descends? Just because your friend was there? So he was having alcohol and you were having a soft drink? No. You have to make a choice. You have to make a choice. But anyway, when these people of taqwa, on their mounts, with complete honor and respect, they will be taken where? Ilal jannati zumara. They will be taken towards Jannah. So this is the final, final destination, alhamdulillah. They're being taken to Jannah in groups. So what kind of groups are they in? Alhamdulillah, we will be with our Imams. So we will be with Imam Azam radiallahu ta'ala. Inshallah, uh, a program is coming up on Imam Azam. And we would all attend, inshallah. We will in- attend, inshallah. We will be with Imam Azam. And all the Qadris, inshallah, will be with Ghase Azam. And they will be, the Chishtis will be with Khwaja Azam, inshallah. All the Razwis will be with uh, Sayyidi Allah Hazrat, radiallahu ta'ala. Okay? And all who, those who believe in Maslaki Allah, that not just the Razwis, but all of us. We will be with our Imam. Yawma nad'u kulla unasim bi imami. On that day, in fact, this is another ayat which actually opens this up. That on that day, all the people will be called with their Imams. I wonder what will happen to those people who just don't believe in no Imams. There are people who don't believe in Imam Azam. They don't believe in Ghose Azam. They don't believe in any Shaykh. They don't believe in anyone. Who are you going to be with? Your Imam will be Shaitan on that day. Alhamdulillah, we have so many Imams. So, you will be with your Shaykh or your teacher and he will be with his teacher and he will be with his Shaykh and so on. We'll all inshallah come together under the umbrella of Rasulullah Inshallah. So, Zumara will also be in groups, also in groups of Namazis, also in groups of people who give in the way of Allah, also people who do Umrah and Hajj and so on. We'll be with pious groups on that day inshallah. But that is only if you are part of those groups in this world, isn't it? If you don't see the face of an Imam in this world, as some brothers do, they just don't meet the Imam. They have no teacher. They have no connection with Islam. Who are you going to be with, brother? They don't even know what Hanafi is. You find somebody. I was on the flight just day before yesterday and the, this Muslim brother and he was from Manchester and he didn't know what Hanfi is he didn't know what like the Silsalai Tariqat is he didn't know nothing who is he going to be? he'll be lost where should I go? I had no Imam I didn't follow anyone I didn't bother to learn about anyone where will he go? he will be lost just like he's lost in this world so learn brothers learn so that we can be with groups and we will be in the same group, inshallah, on the day of Qiyamah. Hatta iza ja'uha. Until they come. Wa. There, Allah Ta'ala did not say, Wa fuqihat abawabuha. When Allah was talking about Jahannam. Here, just one extra letter, Wa. Fuqihat abawabuha. But look how it changes the meaning. There we heard that they will come to the door of Jahannam, they will find the door of Jahannam closed. Okay? Here they are coming to the door of Jannah and they see that the door of Jannah is already open. Allah with His immense mercy, unparalleled, unlimited mercy has already left the door of Jannah open for us. So that we can just enter. Just like the doors of Masjid are open. Come believers, come. Come believers, come. You know Masjid Haram never closes. Come all those people who want to do Umrah and Hajj and Tawaf. Come, come inside. In the same way Allah has left Jannah open. Come believers, come. I have left it open for you. Okay? So Jannah is open all the time. 24-7. As soon as you die as a believer, there you go. There you go, inshallah. The names of Jannah are there. <coughs> Again, the angel will talk. The guardian of Jannah will talk this time. Salamun alaykum tibutum fadukuluha khalidin. So the first word here is salam. 
Salam. A believer has come. What is the greeting for a believer? Salam. Salamun alaykum. Tibutum. You have done rather well. He's going to congratulate you. You did good. You did good. Just like your teacher who is happy at the end of the year that you have worked well and you have graduated with good marks. The teacher is happy. Here, the angel is expressing his like satisfaction with you. He's saying, Mashallah, you did good. You did good in the world. There were so many temptations in the world. There were so many distractions in the world. But man, you did good. You did good. Alhamdulillah. Imagine how good you will feel when your teacher tells you, you did good. This is the angel of Jannah telling you, you did good, brother. You did good, sister, mashallah. Salamun alaykum. Tibutum fadukhuluha khalidi. Now stay in it forever. Now you're not going to come out. This is your final destination. Stay in Jannah forever and ever and ever. It's never going to end. Some people say, oh, it's going to be boring forever and ever. No, 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 you can't comprehend. You can't comprehend. You will be in it forever. When you enjoy it, <coughs> when you enjoy the nemas, it's never going to be enough. But then what will they say? The last bit, last ayat. وَقَالُوا Finally. What will they say? Alhamdulillah. But this is not like the Alhamdulillah we say in this world. No, no. You know what they have been through? They have been through death. They have been through being raised. They have been over the pul sirat. They have been over the scales. They have been through all these places and waiting anxiously for the final verdict to be delivered. And then when it was delivered, Allah said, take him to Jannah. And then he was taken finally by the angels to Jannah. And he looks at the beautiful doors of Jannah. And he, saw, he sees that the door is already open. And the angel is saying that, you know, you did good, be in it forever. And he can actually see the palaces inside. And he can see the hood inside. And he can see a glimpse of all the ni'mat inside. Now imagine what kind of Alhamdulillah he's going to say. That is going to come deep from his heart. Ah, Alhamdulillah. I've made it. I've made it. This will be his, the ultimate Alhamdulillah that he's going to say. That I've made it. Alhamdulillah. Allazi sadaqana. So all praise to Allah. Who made his promise come true. His promise came true. You know all that promises? Pray namaz, you will go to Jannah. Give zakat, you will go to Jannah. Obey Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa you will go to Jannah. Hey, this is it. It was all true. It was not just stories. It was true. You will feel it. You will realize when you are actually in front of Jannah. And then, a very interesting thing. وَأَوْرَسَنَ الْأَرْضِ That this, this zameen, this, this, this zameen of Jannah, this land of Jannah, He made us inherit it. How did we inherit Jannah? You know what inheritance is? Somebody had it, then we get it. This is inheritance. Who had Jannah before us that we inherited? Who had Jannah before us that we inherited? Anyone? Subhanallah. Our father had it. Adam alayhi salam had Jannah. We inherited from him. It has been distributed amongst his children. This is yours. Another meaning of our asana to inherit is, you know, the mercy of Allah. Allah made a place for everyone in Jannah. Everyone's got place. Okay? Every human being that Allah made, Allah made a place in Jannah for him. Because Allah expected the best. You know, I made like, say for example, 20 trillion people. Allah made space for 20 trillion people in Jannah. Not just believers, all of them. All of them. All has space. But then, all of them did not end up in Jannah. In fact, most ended up where? Jahannam. Most ended up in there. I don't want to scare you, but 99 out of 100 are going to end up there. Okay? Because most are not believers. So most did not end up there. But there is space for all of them. You know what Allah will do? Allah will say that all those people who could not come, who did not come to Jannah, you will get the space. 
Allah will distribute and divide it among the Jannatis, inshaAllah. So we are going to inherit the place of the non-believers who were supposed to be in Jannah, but because of their disbelief and evil deeds, they ended up in Jahannam. We will get their share too. So we will get it. We will get it. That stay in Jannah wherever you want. Hey, pick your pick your palace. Whichever one you want. And you know they say that for each ordinary Jannati, an ordinary like me, okay? Like there are the Ambiya, the Siddiqeen, the Shohada, all these people are great people. But for ordinary people, they say that each ordinary person's Jannah is 10 times bigger than this earth. You say, how are you going to travel all that? Well, if we can, have, we can have like rockets here, why can't we have rockets there? Inshallah. Allah will make us travel fast, inshallah. Okay? But that is the space of Jannah. It's going to be huge. It's going to be beautiful, alhamdulillah. Allah will say, take your pick. You know, stay wherever you want. Here, you cannot stay where you want to stay. Okay? You cannot afford most of the things. But if you did good deeds, you will be able to afford anything in Jannah. Allah will say, take your pick. Whatever you want. Whichever you want. Wherever you want. Just go. And what an excellent reward for the performers, for the people who tried, for the people who did come to the masjid, for the people who did wake up for Fajr, for the people who did not watch bad things, for the people who obeyed the obeyed Allah and Rasulullah and the parents and the teachers. Yes, it was difficult in this world. It's not easy. Nobody is saying it's easy. But then look at the reward too. This reward doesn't come for small things. Allah is giving you this immense, unlimited reward, which is going to last forever. But you have to do something. You need to make some effort. We cannot get it for free. This is the time where we have to do it, brothers. This is the time. See how beautiful Allah painted the picture? Now, you and I need to make this choice. Do you want to go towards Jannah? Or do you want to go towards Jahannam? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us the dwellers of Jannah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us one who the angels give the glad tidings and basharat of Jannah. And never uh, we become those who Allah will end up in Jahannam. Wa akhiru da'wana anilhamdulillahi rabbil alamin.